In this special series of the Leaders in Payments podcast titled Be Solid is brought to you in collaboration with NMI, the fully integrated payment solution built to scale. In this six-part series, we're going to discuss the embedded finance revolution, why it is so powerful and growing exponentially, and where it is heading. Most importantly, what does it mean to your business, whether you're an ISV, ISO, Payfac, or bank? In a world of squares and stripes, be solid. As a business customer, you'll be looking for your software provider to be able to give you that extra service of a business checking account. I think from there, it's a launching point for other financial services. Once you have payments and banking, lending becomes easier, insurance becomes really easy, things like accounting, and then all of the data that gets mixed up in this that you can utilize as a provider really becomes powerful. That was Ernie Moran, the Chief Revenue Officer of MAST, and he is my special guest on this episode, episode 236 of the Leaders in Payments podcast, and I'm your host, Greg Myers. As we continue our deep dive into the Be Solid campaign brought to you by NMI, Ernie and I discuss his company, MAST, and we take a deep dive into embedded finance. For those of you who don't know, MAST helps software providers like ERPs and vertical software companies become a one-stop shop for their customers by offering a suite of embedded finance solutions. First, Ernie provides his high-level view of embedded finance, including what products are being embedded now versus what will be embedded in the future. We also talk about the ISO community and their role in the future of embedded finance. Ernie wraps up with some great things both software companies and ISO should consider when exploring embedded finance. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Ernie, and welcome to this episode of the Leaders in Payments podcast, where we're doing a deep dive on embedded finance. So welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. Glad to be here. Great. So let's start out by having you tell us a little bit about your current role at MAST and maybe a little personal and career background about how you got there. Sure. I joined MAST this year as Chief Revenue Officer, and I really wanted to be part of the team that's truly defining embedded finance. I've been in the payment space on the acquiring and issuing side for over 25 years with some big traditional players as well as some smaller niche organizations. And what that experience has shown me is that a disciplined focus on delivering real value to the market just always wins out. And I continue to be surprised at how that concept is so obvious, yet so many struggle with it. And at MAST, that truly is our mission. It's delivering real value with embedded finance. And the reception so far has been positive and super exciting. Okay. Well, let's talk about the company MAST a little more detail. So what exactly does MAST do? Yeah, we help software providers like ERPs, vertical SaaS, really become a one-stop shop for their customers by offering a suite of embedded finance solutions as integrated services in their software. So with a single contract and integration, MAST partners can provide their customers with integrated payment acceptance, business checking accounts, debit cards, and other forthcoming financial services, all under their own brand. And this integrated experience simplifies money management for businesses and ensures that those software providers maintain their brand prominence and loyalty. And additionally, this approach allows the software providers to really unlock hidden revenue and amp up customer experiences by monetizing payment acceptance and business checking deposits as features in the platform. And as we say around here, when a software provider includes embedded services on their platform, they can cash in every time their customers accept payments or bank their revenue. Nice. Okay. So tell me a little more about MAST, maybe the size of the company and a few details like that. Yeah, sure. So MAST has been working on this solution, pushing it to market for a little over a year and a half now. We're about 20 employees. It's important to know that we're a wholly owned subsidiary underneath Synovus. So even though MAST is a small organization that's bringing this embedded finance product to market, we've got the structure and the stability of this juggernaut of banking behind us. I mean, most forget sometimes or don't realize just how innovative a bank Synovus is with TSIS 
and with some of their sponsorships of so many ISOs out in the market. It's a perfect match to be able to allow MAST to provide these services, but standing behind them, this incredible parent company. Okay, I think that might be a good segue into the next question of what differentiates MAST in the marketplace today. Yeah, great question. Well, first, it's just simply it's payments and banking in one solution. And unlike others who offer payments or banking, MAST offers both in a single integrated offering. This allows those software providers to follow the flow of money end to end by helping business owners, and they can get started really fast. We simplify enrollment, they can accept more payments and link those bank deposits. And when that happens, the software providers can fully understand how, when, and where their business customers are moving money so they can promote relevant offers and extend that critical lifetime value. Second thing I'd say is that differentiates us is it's really easy to buy, sell, and use. Software providers can get started in just a short period of time with a single production-ready integration, no more complex vendor connections for multiple providers. And unlike others, MAST offers a fully brandable experience, fully brandable. So business owners, the customers of the software providers, they know and trust their software providers. One less logo reduces confusion and increases value for that software provider. Probably third is we're a built-in bank sponsor. So MAST is a wholly owned subsidiary of Synovus, as I mentioned. It's a recognized innovator in the industry. So we blend that security, stability, and compliance services that come with Synovus's rock-solid reputation and then that member FDIC status with the same agility and vigor of a startup that we are. Okay. You know, one of the things I think, just to remind people, your CEO, Tom, was on the show a few months back. And one of the things he and I talked about that I thought was really intriguing as someone who's been around the space for a while is the fact that you guys know the importance of getting your customers' customers to adopt the product, right? Whether it's a payment product or a checking product. That's or, right. That's right. right how important that is. And you guys work with them to create marketing campaigns to get that adoption. And I think that's an interesting component that I don't hear a lot of other companies do. Yeah, it's so true. First off, that was a tremendous podcast with Tom Bell. I mean, he's an industry titan. I would highly suggest if people have not heard that, watched that, to go back and listen. It was an outstanding podcast. Always great to listen to Tom, and you did a great job on that, Greg. But yeah, if you look around the industry in people that are doing similar things on the embedded payment side, not embedded finance, but embedded payment side, they're driving partners to do the integration. They're driving partners to acquire the services. But then the majority of those partners just unfortunately, don't end up actually realizing the adoption metrics that they're looking for. And that's a real shame because there's a lot of work that goes into it during that buying process and during that integration process. And that's a huge differentiator for MAST is that we work with that partner to on a go-to-market strategy that guarantees that we're going to drive either adoption or conversion from their existing base or even help with customer acquisition, like we're doing with a couple of partners today where they don't have a base of business, but we're going out to market and helping them with campaigns and content that's really driving new customer growth to their software. So it's a real differentiator. You're absolutely right, Greg. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned embedded payments, and that's been all the buzz for several years, and it may go right under the term payment facilitator, payfac. I mean, that's kind of all similar, right? But what I want to talk about with the rest of this session is let's look at that beyond payments, because I feel like that's what this series is about. And I feel like that's the future, right? And the companies that are setting themselves up now to provide that, I think, are going to be successful. So just high-level question, how do you view or define embedded finance? Yeah, it's a great question because everything has been embedded payments to the point where it's fairly ubiquitous. Embedded finance, simply put, is everything to do with the flow of money It's when banks or other financial service providers help the software provider or other organizations offer a suite of financial products as features in their software. And normally, this requires multiple providers to deliver. 
things like payment acceptance, bank accounts, debit cards, and other financial products. That leads to multiple relationships, complex integrations, and really, unfortunately, in the end, really clunky customer experiences. And often banking services are provided through a third-party tech company that requires a bank sponsor to comply with federal and state regulations. And that adds even more complexity. I spoke to a partner this week who was onboarding a customer, and he said that every day they uncovered a new integration with the customer. And then the cost factor, the customer was paying in the end, over 9% in fees because vendor A takes a piece at the point of sale and vendor B takes a piece down the line, et cetera, et cetera. There's definitely a better way. And the trick is to have the right solution when the business owner, the customer of that software provider needs it and makes it easy to get started. And the most efficient models are typically three-step, and this is what we follow. The software provider, of course, enrolls the business owner, signs them up with their software. Then we begin identifying or looking for signs a business owner needs additional services like business checking, payment acceptance, loans, or more. And that's where our performance marketing comes in. And then the simplification of it, the key, making the services the business owners need readily and easily available right within the platform. And so that end-to-end financial services strategy can help you create value for your customers by making the right products available at the right time and by making those products really easy to consume. The direct benefit to the customer is often more services at lower costs and less time having to do this swivel chair thing between platforms, most of which those platforms don't speak to each other, which cause additional operational inefficiencies. Okay. I know some software companies have started to integrate products beyond payments. I don't think it's anywhere near kind of the penetration of payment acceptance, but when do you see that starting to really happen in the marketplace? Yeah, as you said, it's great news is they've already started, which is great for the consumer. It's great for the business customer, but you're right. They're only just getting started. Forbes projects something like $230 billion in revenue by 2025. That's a 10x increase from $22.5 billion in 2020. So it's growing, but there is a heck of a lot more runway for growth. So I see it from this point forward starting to accelerate at a pretty quick pace. And MAST is there providing some of that pace. But the opportunity, it really is massive for software providers They're going to be able to enhance their platforms with valuable features to attract new customers, increase revenue per customer, and deepen those relationships. Because like you said, payment processing, embedded payments, it's it's definitely proven path to success. Everybody I talk to is thinking about it already. There's very few, if any, that aren't. But it's not a differentiator anymore. So other embedded finance offerings like banking can increase that value, create the new revenue streams, deepen the relationships. I would say if a software company isn't already thinking about all of these opportunities to differentiate their product from their competitor's product, it's time to dive in. Yeah, I agree. And you said banking to me, banking's a broad term. Where do you see, like, what's the next step for a lot of these companies? Is it credit cards? Is it debit or deposit products or or is it insurance? I mean, what do you feel like is sort of the next set of products that we're going to see really get some penetration? The short answer is it's going to be very vertical specific, of course. But the longer answer is a place to store value, a business checking account at its core is just such a fundamental product. And believe it or not, for those people that don't know, it's not as easy to acquire. It's not free, generally. And so there are challenges with that. So I think that business checking accounts is really going to launch and be kind of a a launching point for so many additional products. You know, so many software providers, they're just, they're capturing just a little piece of the revenue right now as that payments flows through. But where does it flow through to? It flows through to a bank account that they have, they get no value off of. They get no monetization of that bank account. They only monetize it as that payment is flowing through. Being able to provide business checking accounts a real value to your business customers, where not only can those payments flow through your embedded payments function, but into a checking account that you've now provided to your customer, that's going to be a game changer 
And it's difficult right now, which is why what we're doing, but it's going to soon be a place where as a business customer, you'll be looking for your software provider to be able to give you that extra service of business checking account. I think from there, it's a launching point for other financial services. Once you have payments and banking, lending becomes easier, insurance becomes really easy, things like accounting, and then all of the data that gets mixed up in this that you can utilize as a provider really becomes powerful. So I think the launching point for me is that value storage, that business checking account is such a critical component of businesses. Yeah, and you mentioned something that I was going to ask you about, the whole data aspect. I feel like that's such a powerful component of this that we don't talk a lot about. But just the amount of data, to your point, you have your payments running through this engine, you have the bank account, you have so much data there that you can make, you meaning masked slash your customers can make really smart, intelligent decisions about what products to offer and when and under what terms. It just seems like capturing that data is just a huge part of the success of this. It really is. It's yeah, just like so many other industries, data is the key. With data, you can do some amazing things. Imagine you've got data from the payments revenue, the payments flows, who they're selling to. You've also got the bank account and the the deposits that are flowing into the bank account. You've got the debit card spend off of that bank account. Now you're able to get a full picture and combined with the data of the software provider who maybe is focused on inventory management or payables, you can take all of that data and you can start de-risking additional offers that you want to make to the business customer. And in the end, that data and that capability to de-risk your offers means that they're going to get better economics for the services that you're going to be able to provide them. So take lending as an example. You now have the ability to provide them better terms so that they can grow their business because you've got data that says that this is a customer that we can ensure we're going to have a return on. That is super powerful. But there's so many other cool data examples. We talk internally, you know, about some crazy ones, but they're not so crazy. They look like magic now, but they won't be magic (laughs) shortly, you know? Right. Like imagine a world where a software for a mom and pop candy store notices that the revenues are up, but the owners are still working 80 hours a week. And so the software automatically provides an offer of working capital back to the owners so that a clerk can be hired while at the same time providing five recommendations through their embedded HR solution. Like, it looks like magic now, but pretty soon, it'll just be commonplace to those software providers that really embrace the data and the full suite of services where they capture all that value. Yeah, I'm sure we could talk about tons of use cases (laughs) and some really cool things. Absolutely. So we're talking about software companies, but there's a huge part of the payments industry that not many people are talking about when it comes to embedded payments. And I don't want to kind of just go through this whole interview and not talk about it. It's the ISO world, right? It's the independent sales organizations, which have been around as long as payments have, I think. So what does this trend towards embedding products mean to that segment of the payments industry. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought up the ISOs because I'm a big fan. Just like how embedded finance helps software providers focus on what they do best within their industry vertical, embedded finance is going to be helping ISOs focus on their core business and deepen those relationships. Because every successful ISO that I've worked with is a relationship company. They get to know an industry better than most. They connect with those decision makers who have the foresight to grow their businesses. These smart ISOs are already recognizing that they can distribute a wider array of solutions by partnering with embedded finance providers. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure you've heard this too, you know, the death of the ISO. I mean, how long have we heard that? To me, you know, they haven't gone anywhere, but do the ISOs get disintermediated in this? To me, death of the ISO, you can mark that one right up there with death of cash. You know, it's been, we've been talking about it for decades now. Mm -hmm. Listen, ISOs have a critical role going forward, full stop. They already specialize in payments. I mean, the smartest people in the industry regarding the intricacies of payment acceptance are in the ISO space. And before long, 
they'll be specialists in embedded finance products too. So add that trusting relationship they have with business owners and in those verticals and the understanding of the unique needs of the variety of industries, and they're going to remain relevant far into the future. So do they get disintermediated? No, they actually have a real opportunity here to provide even more value to their existing market. So I'm a big fan. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, I think the days of thinking about an ISO is someone who has the hardware in the trunk of their car and they go down the strip mall center and just try to sell merchant processing. I think those days are long gone, but I agree with you. The ones that have a vision and really want to grow their business and stay up with the trends in the industry are going to figure out how to make it work. I agree. I don't know any of those anymore. The ones I know are really brilliant individuals who understand the industry. They understand those intricacies and they're taking advantage of it by providing value to the customers that I'd say a lot of the traditional payments providers or even some of the kind of disruptors out there that just don't have that level of expertise or desire to provide that level of expertise into that customer base anymore. So from a knowledge source, they provide just absolute tremendous value. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, let's step up a level from software companies and ISOs to just kind of the payments industry as a whole. What do you think this trend towards embedded finance means to the overall payments industry? Yeah, as I mentioned, I've been in traditional payments for a long time. So I've seen it from the beginning, practically. I would say to the traditional payments provider out there, it means innovate or get left behind. And maybe that's been being said for a long time, but it couldn't be more the case now than any other time. Because here's where it comes down to. The value to a software provider of true embedded finance is so compelling that there's absolutely no room for organizations who are focused on selling traditional payment services. No room. So many organizations are playing catch up right now because they've already experienced the impact from just embedded payments. So as embedded finance offerings, like what we're doing at MAST, become more widely available, the impact to traditional payments just grows. But at the same time, with that warning, it also means a tremendous opportunity for the payments industry to really lead this new era of embedded finance. And what I like about this overall, the embedded finance and what it means as well is to the business customer. You can't stress this enough, this real value that it's providing to the business customer. It's a seamless white labeled experience under the software provider's brand can just really help increase operational efficiencies, lower costs, so many things, so much value to those business customers. So embedded finance is a tremendous opportunity across the payments and finance spectrum in this traditional payments industry. Yeah, totally agree. So what does the future of embedded finance look like? Well, uh, within a few years, I truly believe that business owners will look to their primary software provider, be it an ERP, a vertical SaaS, marketplace, whatever, for the majority of their financial products. Today's practice of procuring financial products directly from multiple sources will really be as odd of a concept as building a website and then picking up the phone to call your bank to ask what solution they offer for e-commerce. It just, it doesn't happen. As a business owner, why would I spend valuable time away from my customers when with a couple clicks of a mouse, I can get my payments, my checking account, my debit cards, credit cards, funding, you name it, financial services from the software provider who is most important to the operations of my business, where most of my trust is. The short answer is they won't. They'll look to their software providers for all of those financial services. 15 years ago, if a business owner needed payments, where did you go? You went to someone that sold you a terminal. You went somewhere where they, they sold you a separate product, separate from your business because you needed payment acceptance. Nowadays, you wouldn't dream of following that same process. Where do you go? You go to your software provider with financial products. In a few years, it'll be exactly the same. Yeah, I love that. I love that vision, that explanation. It kind of gives you that visual and makes it kind of come to life. Well, 
Ernie, we've covered a lot of ground so far. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Sure. Let's talk about a few things software providers and ISOs who are exploring embedded finance should consider. One, you really need to make sure that your prospective partner aligns with your goals, your prospective embedded finance partner. So evaluate your current tech stack, your product roadmap, and your customer base. Where are the gaps? Where are the gaps? Where are the hidden, where's the hidden revenue? The right partner is going to help you upgrade quickly, seamlessly, and securely. They'll provide a single integration, and they can even take control of underwriting, compliance, security, support, and even marketing so you can focus on your core business and serve your customers better. Number two, are you both invested in your success? Embedded finance represents a very powerful profit opportunity for software providers. They should look for a partner willing to share in the economics of all financial services. And number three, is your prospective partner on the bleeding edge of risk management? You can't talk about anything in fintech without a focus on risk and compliance. A little hat tip. As business software focuses more on individual industries, a key differentiator will be whose ear is best attuned to their customers. A singular focus on the user experience shouldn't compromise critical data security and protection concerns. So the right embedded finance partner should offer institutional grade compliance and risk management. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing those considerations. Very, very good way to wrap up the session. So Ernie, thank you so much for being on the show. I know your time is very valuable. So I really appreciate you being here and discussing embedded finance today. Greg, I appreciate the time. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And until the next story. Thank you for listening to this episode in our special series, Be Solid, brought to you by NMI, the fully integrated payment solution built to scale. For more information on embedded finance and this episode, please visit www.nmi.com slash resources slash podcasts. And remember, in a world of squares and stripes, be solid.